Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Mr. Samuel Sapping, and in today's video, we'll be looking at the chain rule. Alright, so before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Alright, let's get to it. So, basically, when applying the chain rule, you have to look for some questions that are functions that look like, say, f of x being equal to c times something to the n functions of this kind. Now the derivative of such a function, which is f prime of x, is equal to nc, which means n times c, times something raised to n minus 1 times the derivative of something. The derivative of something. So don't forget. So basically, I'll make you understand this with a simple trial. So, say you have a trial that has a function, say, f of x being equivalent to 4, from brackets, x squared minus 1 to the power of 3. So, in this case, if you had to collect data, you understand that something is x squared minus 1, c is equivalent to uh, 4, and n is equivalent to 3. So, this implies that f prime of x is equal to uh, n times c, which means 3 times 4, times the something, which is x squared minus 1, then the power of that something is reduced by 1, times the derivative of that something, and the derivative of x squared minus 1, if you apply the power, will simply be 2x. Now, if you simplify this furthermore, f prime of x will then be 12 times x squared minus 1, to the new power of 2 times what? Huh? 2x. Now, basically, this can be simplified furthermore. And therefore, we could say f prime of x is equal to 12 times 2x. That gives you 24x times x squared minus 1 to the power of 2. And this is the final answer. All right, let's understand this chain rule with a few examples. Examples. Say we've been told to find dy over what? dx. Say we have question one that says f of x is equal to minus 5x cubed minus 3 to the power of 3. So if you apply the chain rule here to the f prime of x being equal to n times c, of which n is simply 3 and c is 1. 1 is an abstract figure, it's no more seen in math. So there it is. Times 1, then the something, which is minus 5x cubed, minus 3, the power is reduced by 1, times the derivative of something, which will in this turn be minus uh, 15x squared. So f prime of x is equal to 3 times 1, that's 3, times minus 5x cubed, minus 3, times minus 15x squared. So, if you simplify furthermore, you end up having f prime f prime of x being equivalent to minus 45 x squared by minus 5 x cubed minus 3 with the new power of 2 there and 2 there I hope it's clear let's look at another example say we have say f of x being equal to minus 2 of x squared minus 1 to the power of 5. So basically here when we apply the chain rule, we'll have f prime of x being equal to n times c, which would be 5 times minus 2, times the something, the power is just by 1, which would be 4, times the derivative of the something, which is just 2x in this case. So f prime of x is now equal to minus 10 times x squared minus 1 to the power of 4 times 2x. If you simplify this furthermore, f prime of x will now be equal to minus 20x times x squared minus 1 to the power of 4. All right, let's look at example number 3. Say f of x is equal to, say x cubed plus x squared. 
raised to the seventh power. All right, you can pause this video and attempt to do it on your own and see if you can understand. All right, this implies that f prime of x is equal to n times c, this is seven times one, times something, x cubed plus x squared, the power is reduced by one, so having seven minus one, times the derivative of the something. In this case, we'll have three x squared plus two x. So this will now be f prime of x being equal to seven times x cubed plus x squared, new power of six times three x squared plus two x, just like that. Now others would leave their answers here, but if you want, you can simplify for them and say f prime of x is now equal to, because this is the same as seven times three x squared plus two x, then times x cubed plus x squared to the power of six. Therefore, f prime of x is equal to seven fours out by multiplying this and that. So seven times three, that gives you 21 x squared, seven times two, that's 14 x, and the relative of this, is multiplied by x cubed plus x squared to the power of six. It's our final answer. Let's look at an interesting question. Say we have y being equal to the fourth root of minus three x to the fourth minus two. All right, so before we apply the chain rule, we can put this in a manipulative way. I would say y is equal to open brackets minus three x to the fourth minus two to the power of one over four. Now, if we begin to apply the chain rule, which means f prime of x is now going to be equal to n times c. So this is one over four times one times something, which is minus three x to the fourth minus two to the power of one over four minus one times the derivative of something. If you apply power rule here, what you get is minus 12 x to the third. Now, this can be dated out here. So you can say one over four minus one over one, common denominator is four, you get a one minus what? Four, this gives you a minus three over what? Four. So that's a new power. So now you have f prime of x being equal to one over four times minus three x to the fourth minus two, to the new power of minus three over what? Four times minus 12 x cubed. All right, this is very interesting. So now let's make this power be existing as a positive index. So which means f prime of x is equal to one over four times one over minus three x to the fourth minus two to the positive three over what? Four times minus 12 x cubed over what? One. So now this is going to be f prime of x being equivalent to one. So now one times one times minus 12x, this gives us minus 12x cubed over four, open brackets minus three, x to the fourth, minus two to the power of three over what? Four. Now, you can simplify this by saying four there, one, four there, gives you what? Three, therefore, f prime of x gives you three minus three x cubed over minus three x to the fourth, minus two to the three over what? Four. And this will be the final what? answer, as simple as it is. Now let's look at uh, five. So suppose we have uh, a function as f of x being equal to uh, the root of uh, minus two x squared plus one, like this. So what I have to do first is to manipulate this in the form of f of x being equal to minus two x squared plus one, two. So basically, once you have this, all you have to do now is to apply the chain rule. So this would be f prime of x being equal to the n times c, which is one over two times one. Then this is multiplied by the something, which is minus two x squared plus one to the power of one over two minus one times the derivative of something, which is minus four x. Now this can be dated out something somewhere else using the data. 1 over 2 minus 1 over 1, common denominator that's 2, you get a 1 minus 2, giving you minus 1 over what? 2. So that's our new power. Yeah. All right, so we have f prime of x being equal to 1 over 2 times minus 2x squared plus 1 to the minus 1 over 2, say over 1, times minus 4x over what? 1. 
Now to make this a positive index, this guy here, we have to do is reciprocate it. So f prime of x is equal to uh, 1 over 2 times 1 over minus 2x squared plus 1 to the positive 1 over 2 times minus 4x over 1. So now this is now f prime of x being equal to minus 4x over 2 minus 2x squared plus 1 to the 1 over 2. You can reduce this where well, you can say 2 there 1 2 there 2. Therefore f prime of x is now equal to minus 2x over now this can be written in uh, radical form and this would be radical uh, minus 2x squared plus 1 and this is your final art answer so basically applying the chain rule is quite simple you might also end up having trig uh, functions but there's a video on trig functions where you apply the chain rule uh, it's basically one of the same technique so don't forget that you know what n is and know what c is then apply the technique that i've explained to you my name is mr hussein masabi and don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel remember to strategize before you become a statistic